Hi guys, Tony here from Tony Reviews. Today we're going to take a look at changing our chain and sprockets and ask the question, can we get more performance out of changing up our sprocket ratios? But before we do that, don't forget to take a look at the Let Us Live merchandise website. If you're into motorbikes and you like all things motorcycles, check out the Let Us Live website. Here we go. Okay, so when I was changing my chain and sprockets, I was doing it for two reasons. Firstly, the chain and sprockets were coming to the end of their life. And secondly, I wanted to change them because I really wanted a black sprocket and a gold chain, just to go with the, the look of my bike, you know, everything sort of blacked out with like gold hints everywhere. And so I knew that when it came to the point that I was going to change it, that was what I was going to go for. At the time, I didn't really understand anything about... Um, the sort of ratios, cog ratios, and how that could impact on the power and the performance of the bike. But what I did was I went on to uh, one of the Facebook forums um, for Triant Street Twins, and some people on there were really helpful and uh, gave me a little bit of advice about stuff and pointed me in the right direction of where I could get my hands on a chain and sprockets. Okay, I'm going to do my best to attempt to explain ratios and how changing the cogs can affect your bike with either giving it more torque or more top end high end power um, so if we imagine in a simplified world we've got our front cog which has got four teeth on it and we've got our rear cog which has got 12 teeth on it the fraction in that would be four into 12 the four teeth on this into the 12 teeth on that so four over 12 which simplified down is four goes into 12 three times. So it's one over three, which basically means the three represents that has to do three res revolutions in order for the, this larger back cog to do the one revolution. If we was to change this ratio up and we said, all right, we'll keep the front just in terms of keeping it simple. We've got the four, four teeth on the front but we're gonna increase the size of the rear sprocket to a 16 tooth sprocket. What's that gonna do? Well, four over 16 is one over four. Sorry, I'm doing my maths. Um, which means this is gonna to have to turn, the front cog is gonna to have to turn four times in order for the rear cog to do one revolution. But what does that actually mean when you break it down and you say, well, yeah, you know, that's turning four times in order for that to turn once. What does that actually mean? Well, this cog with the larger rear um, sprocket in relation to the front, you know, the increased tooth on the back over the front is going to mean that this bike with the larger rear cog in relation to the front cog is going to be more torquey. So you're going to have increased torque. This bike is going to have more power, but top end. So top end cruising speed. So it's really down to your bike and how you like to ride it and what you want from your bike. Now, for me on a Triumph Street Twin, it's not all about top end power. You know, you're not going to get big end speeds from a street from a, a Bonneville Street Twin engine. You know, you, you're going to do your 65 to 75, you know, cruising speeds. But anything over that, it's, um, you know, it's pretty painful. So you ain't going to go for top end power on that. Um, but what you, what the bike is great for is its torque. So if you can increase the torque, which is what I went for, so I increased the uh, the tooth on the rear sprocket and kept my front sprocket the same. Um, the current the, the street twin when you get it is uh, as stock has got a 17 tooth uh, front sprocket and a 41 tooth rear. Um, and all I did was I kept the front the same at 17. But I upgraded the rear just by one tooth to 42. So can you can you feel any difference, you know, if you're just going to upgrade by one tooth on the rear cog or, you know, drop a tooth on the front cog? Like, can you notice a difference? Um, for me personally, yeah, I felt that you could instantly feel that difference. There was definitely a performance increase, you know, a little bit more torque there. Even though if you look at the actual ratios in terms of the numbers and the figures of how it breaks down, it's a very minimal amount, you know, um, if you look at the 17 cog on the front into 41 is like 2.411. One. 
And if you look at the um, the ratio difference again on the uh, if you increase it by one tooth, so 17 on the front into 42 on the rear, it's like 2.471. You know, it, it's a very minimal, but I tell you what, you can feed it. Um, some people have mentioned on some of the forums that uh, they've upgraded to a 44 tooth rear. So I think when it comes round for me to change my chain and sprockets again, I'm definitely going to experiment with the uh, upgrading the rear sprocket to more teeth just to see if I can get more torque and see how that feels. Um, but yeah, if you want to, uh, you know, get a little bit of more performance out your bike, decide which way you want to go. Do you want more top end power, more cruising power? Or do you want the bottom end torque power? Okay, so if you're going to do the job yourself, make sure you've got all the tools required. You are going to need like a grinder to grind the, the front of the um, the pins off so that when you use your, your, your pin pusher tool that you can actually push those pins out easily uh, and they can slide through, um, the rivets can slide through the back end and you can just pull the chain out. Uh, you are going to need the heavy duty um, chain press which costs about 40 quid and I'll put a link in the description below about where you can buy that. Um, the people over at Square Deals where I bought the chain and sprockets, when they sent me my kit, they uh, it was missing the press plate, so the thing that actually pushes the, f the front link onto the uh, pin link, you know, and it was missing that. Um, and they sent me one out straight away. He had his own personal one that he got. He said, I've got no more in stock, but I've got this and he sent it out to me. So um, really grateful for that, really good customer service. So check those guys out if you're looking for sort of any Triumph parts for your bike. Um, they were highly recommended on some of the Facebook forums that I went on and I've got to say that I had a good experience with them. So check them out. So I hope you found that helpful. Subscribe to the channel, there's always more videos coming up. Safe riding and I'll see you soon. And don't forget to check out the Let Us Live website.